Hello friends, welcome to JavaScript video tutorials series. From the past few video tutorials, we are trying to understand JavaScript conditional statements. In the previous video tutorials, we have already discussed if statement, if else statement, else if ladder. We left with the switch statement. In this video tutorial, I would like to discuss JavaScript switch case statement. When there are more than one alternative choices present, we use switch case statement. Remember that when there are more than one alternative choices present, we use switch case statement. To make you better understand switch case statement, I have drawn a diagram here. You can see that there is a house. In that house, we have a ceiling fan, a AC and a table fan. Also, we have a switchboard on the left hand side. You can see that there are three buttons. One, two, three. Button one cable is connected to ceiling fan. Button two cable is connected to AC. Button three cable is connected to table fan. Assume that you went outside for playing cricket. You played one or two hours cricket. It's a sunny day, very hot day. You came back to house and you want to get relaxed. You have three different choices now to switch on these devices. Assume your choice is one. If you press the button one, what happens? We know that ceiling fan will get on. If your choice is two, that is if you press the button two, what happens? AC will get on. If you press the button three, what happens? Table fan will get on. So here you have more than one alternative choices. Out of that you choose one. Based on your choice, the specific device will get switch on, right? Now assume that if one and two buttons are connected, what happens if you press the button one? We know that as both the buttons are connected, the ceiling fan as well as AC will get on. So we definitely need a break here in between two button cables, right? Now if you press the button one, ceiling fan will get on. If you press the button two, AC will get on, right? Assume that if button 1, button 2, button 3 all are connected. If your choice is 1, then all the devices will get switch on. Ceiling fan will get switch on, AC will get switch on, table fan will get switch on because they are all connected. There is no break. We must and should have a break so that more than one devices should not get switch on here, right? Why I am explaining this example? Because our JavaScript switch case statement works similar to this scenario. Okay, let me explain the syntax of the switch case statement. We write the switch keyword. In pair of parentheses, we write an expression. In between the pair of flower brackets, we write different cases. Here we have case 1, case 2, we can have more cases, case 3, case 5, according to the requirement. We write the case keyword, we give a space, then we give label there. The label can be any constant. It may be a number or a Boolean expression or a string. Then we write the colon symbol. In pair of flower brackets, we write set of statements to execute if the expression and label match each other. Then we use a break statement. The break statement actually moves the control outside the switch statement. Okay. Then we will be having case, space, label to, colon, pair of flower brackets with some set of statements, then break. We can have more cases and at the end we have default case. The default case will get executed when no match occurs with the expression and uh, the cases. Okay, let's have a demonstration and understand clearly. What I do means I simulate this scenario by using the JavaScript uh, switch case statement. You can see that I have already opened default.html in the notepad. It has the basic HTML document structure code written. Title is set to conditional statements. In the body section, I have written opening script and closing script tag. I have already opened default.html in the Chrome. Title is set to conditional statements. I go to notepad. In between the script tag, I create one variable called choice. In this, you can put your choice, which button you want to press. Maybe choice is one, maybe choice is two, maybe choice is three, maybe choice is four, like that. Here I put at present one. Okay. Then, as I told, we use the switch keyword. In pair of parentheses, we put an expression. That is, I'm just using the variable name choice. There is no problem because 
choice is going to be replaced by the value of choice that is one so in this place we will be having one right i say here choice back then in between these pair of flower brackets we say case then we write a label that should match to the choice so i write here one and then in pair of flower brackets here i say document dot write c e i l i n g ceiling fan is on bracket close semicolon you can see that if your choice is one ceiling fan will get on so that's the reason i have written here ceiling fan is on what happens when i say refresh guys browser creates a variable called as choice it puts the value one inside it then it goes to the switch statement we know that the choice is going to be replaced by the one then browser looks for the case whose label is one it executes the set of statements inside that case now we get the output ceiling fan is on on the screen file save go to browser and refresh you can see that we got the output ceiling fan is on okay what if the choice is 2 if choice is 2 we know that the ac should get on what i have to do here i am going to create one more case here case 2 colon in pair of flower brackets i say here document dot write ac is on bracket close semicolon what happens now when i refresh the choice variable is going to have 2 then the browser move to the switch case the choice is replaced by the 2 browser looks for the case whose label is 2 it execute the statement in that case so we get the output ac is on on the screen file save go to browser and refresh you can see that we are getting the output ac is on right even i put some break so that the browser move the cursor to the next line later at any time right so here i use the break okay what if the choice is 3 if choice is 3 we know that table fan will get on okay so i create one more case here case 3 colon in pair of flower brackets i say here document dot write i say table fan is on then i say here break tag let the browser move the cursor to the next line after displaying that text what happens if i refresh choice is going to have 3 browser come to the switch statement the choice is replaced by the 3 and it looks for the case which has the label 3 it executes the statement in that case we get the output table fan is on on the screen file save go to browser and refresh we got the output table fan is on okay what if the choice is 4 or any other number right if there is no button called as 4 so that is actually an invalid choice right for displaying such message we use the default case so in the default case i say document dot write in valid choice double quotations comma i say here br tag bracket close semicolon what happens now browser creates a variable choice puts the 4 inside it goes to this statement the choice is going to be replaced by 4 it looks for the case whether it is 4 no whether it is 4 no whether it is 4 no so it executes the default case okay we get the output invalid choice on the screen file save good browser and refresh we got the output invalid choice good what if we write here 1 now we need to understand it clearly as choice is 1 here the choice is replaced by one browser looks for the case which has the one label so here this is one it executes this line it displays ceiling fan is on then it goes to the case 2 and displays ac is on because we don't have any break statement in the middle it displays table fan is on it displays invalid choice file save go to browser and refresh you can see that ceiling fan is on ac is on table fan is on invalid choice all got displayed uh oh that we don't want that means here all these are actually connected i need a break in between these one and two buttons right so here what i do is i write the break semicolon what happens this time 
the choice is one okay browser come to the switch statement it replaces the choice with one it looks for the case whose label is one it executes the statement inside that ceiling fan is on will be displayed then the break statement will get executed what break statement does means it directly moves the control outside the switch statement so here the control will come let me write here document dot write i say outside switch statement double quotation semicolon okay file save go to browser and refresh we got the output ceiling fan is on and directly browser moves outside the switch statement right hope you guys have clearly understood if i change this to 2 what happens here it goes to case 2 displays ac is on as there is no break it displays table fan is on invalid choice and outside switch statement right file save go to browser and refresh you can see that ac is on table fan is on invalid choice outside switch statement uh oh no so i use here break semicolon this time the choice is 2 this place is going to be replaced by 2 browser goes to the case whose label is 2 it displays ac is on then the break statement will get executed. What break does? It moves the control outside the switch. Directly we get outside switch statement output. File, save, go to browser and refresh. You can see that we got only output AC is on outside switch statement, right? Similarly, I have to use the break here also. Otherwise, the default case will also get executed. Okay. For the last one, we don't need to write break. If you write the break also, there will be no problem. Are you understanding? If it is three, file save, go to browser and refresh. We got the output table fan is on outside the switch statement. If I write here four, file save, go to browser and refresh. Invalid choice outside the switch statement. If I write here one, file save, go to browser and refresh. We have ceiling fan is on outside switch statement. Hope you guys have clearly understood the switch case, how it works, why we use the break statement, what is the use of it, right? Okay, so for this video tutorial, this much is enough friends. In the next video tutorial, we get more information on conditional statements. For more benefits and be up to date, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to like, comment and share these videos with others so that everyone will get benefited. Keep learning, keep coding, keep sharing. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial.